Hi everyone! This is going to be a quick tutorial on how to import your email network using Gephi. So this capability is actually already built into Gephi. If you go to the file menu and then go to import spigot, this will show you a list of all the ways that you can import data from other sources. The one thing that's built in automatically for you is to import your email network. So you'll see that this option of email and email address network is available here. So clicking next, you'll see that some of my data is already in here, but there's a lot of little configuration things you want to do. So I'm going to show you how to import your email directly from the server where it's stored. First you want to enter your full email address. Don't just put your username there, but put your full address. Then put your password that you use to access your email. And then there's two ways that you can uh, actually import the data using POP3 or IMAP. Now, if you look at your email client, so if you use Thunderbird or Outlook or anything where you download the email to your computer, if you go look at those settings, you'll be able to see if it's set up with IMAP or POP3. And what that should also show you is what the receive server address is. If your server type is IMAP, your server address is usually IMAP dot whatever your domain is. Um, if you're using POP3, it's often POP dot whatever your domain is. Now I'm setting this up for Gmail, uh, which I figured would be useful to a lot of you. You can import using POP3 or IMAP on Gmail, but I've found you get much better data using IMAP. I don't know why that is. Uh, it could be that there's restrictions on what you can pull with the POP3 data, but it's a lot better with IMAP. So for Gmail you would select IMAP, you'd put imap.gmail.com, but a really important thing to check here is this advanced box. When you click that, you'll need to change the port that you're connecting to, and if this use SSL to connect is not already checked, you want to connect that. The port will default to 143 and that's not going to work. If we flip over here to a Gmail tutorial on how to use IMAP, we can see that it says to use port 993 and to require SSL. So when we come back here we're going to put 993 and that should work for all of you. So 993 is the port, use SSL to connect should be checked and then say OK. Once you have all of that data entered, you can hit next and this gives you some options to do filtering. So you can filter by address, you can set a date range, you can decide if you want to include messages only about a particular subject or where the text includes particular words, looking at attachments, CCs or BCCs. But for this example, I'm just going to leave everything defaulted and unfiltered. When you're done, click Finish, and what you'll see is this message at the bottom where it'll say Connecting to Server and then Downloading Messages. This is going to take a while, so we'll pause the video and momentarily it'll come back to you after all of my emails have downloaded, and then we can look at the network. Okay, so what we can see here is the Gephi import window, and this is something that you're probably used to seeing if you import a CSV or another network file. It shows us that there were no issues when we imported this, that it's a directed network, and it shows us the number of nodes and edges. You have the same kind of options you normally do, and I'm going to leave all of those at the default and import it. Now we get the network appearing on the screen, and I'm going to go through the normal process I do when visualizing a network. First I'm going to do the layout. I like the Yifan Hu layout, so we'll select that and apply it. You can see a lot of singletons fly off to the edges, but they look a little weird, and if you were to zoom in on them, what you'll see is they have these little hooks. Uh, that indicates that there's an email from the node to itself. So just in case you wondered what those little things are on the outside, that's it. If we click the magnifying glass to see the whole network, you see this big cluster in the middle. And I'm going to apply the network diameter statistics. Uh, that'll let us do betweenness centrality. So close that graph, and now we can change the size and the color coding according to betweenness. And what we see when I do that is that I show up as a really important node in the middle and I'm connected to most of the other nodes in the network. Now, I could delete myself, and then that allows us to see the rest of the network. If I do that, I probably want to lay it out again, so I can rerun our Yifan Hu layout algorithm. Everything sort of flies off, and if I zoom in on one of the clusters, then we can start to see more. 
If I want to see importance here, I can rerun the network diameter statistics, which will give us new data with me removed, and then I can apply the same size in filters, and that lets us see which nodes are most important in this cluster. So with me removed, that gives us a sense of what other groups are communicating in my network. These singletons that I'm highlighting make it hard to see the whole thing, and if I zoom out by clicking that magnifying glass, you can see that the data is really spread out. But you can spot these little clusters and then zoom in on those if you want to get a sense of what are some of the groups that are communicating within this network with the big node removed. You can also use filters if you want to separate out those singletons that lets you do a nicer visualization.